Hello, welcome to the Parent Data Binder course. I'm Jana from Miss Jana's Learning Cafe, and I'm so glad you're here today. I'm a special education teacher, and the 2022-23 school year is my 15th year in the classroom. I'm a mom to five kiddos, two of which are currently on an IEP, and one who received speech services before she entered school. Since I've had the privilege to sit on both sides of the table at an IEP meeting, I feel like I have a unique way of being able to relate as I educate and advocate for students with disabilities. I'm excited to begin to share some of my expertise with you today. Over Thanksgiving break this year, I was doing some personal development and trying to get ready for my daughter's IEP. When I realized, as a parent, I am totally unorganized. At school, I am super meticulous. I have my IEP files, I have all the materials, I have everything ready, and it's filed nicely to get ready when I need to sit down and write an IEP. But at home, I didn't even know where my current IEP was to begin looking over things to get ready for her meeting. This realization grew into a passion project that now I get to share with you today. In his book, Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl says that any how is possible as long as there is a why. I always like to start my lessons at school off telling the kids why and then moving into the how. So why is a parent data binder necessary? For me, it started out as a place to keep my IEP so I could refer to them when I needed, once a year. But now it's a place for me to keep all the information I need to help me get ready for a meeting, helps me keep all of my medical information at hand, and get ready to turn all of this over to my, my children when they're old enough. Now I realize that some children will never be taking over their care or becoming their own personal advocate. However, as a parent with a child with special needs, it's important to have all the legal, all the medical, and informational paperwork in one place for easy access. If there was an emergency, how would those taking care of your child know where to look for this information? Or as they transition from one setting to another, do you have a way to pass that information on? A data binder is simply a tool to help you be a parent, or help you be, as a parent, be prepared to be an active member of your child's IEP team and get ready to turn over information as necessary. Are you ready to dig into what I've included? First of all, if you're gonna need a three ring binder, I personally recommend two inches or larger depending on how long your child has been receiving services. I'm showing you my youngest son's binder and you can see I didn't start off with a bigger binder and I'm already needing to upgrade to a larger one. I personally like this plastic on the outside cover then that way I can slip this cover sheet in and I know exactly whose binder it is, what we're doing um, and I don't have to like open it to flip through. So on this cover I've, prese I've given a place for their name and their classification. If you have any questions about classification, that is in another training that I do. So please look for that if you have any questions. Uh, next that you're going to need are some divider tabs. I personally like these tabs that have the tab on one side and the double pocket. So there's a pocket on both sides. Um, and I will show you why I like those ones the best. There are 12 sections in what I'm presenting to you today. You may not need them all, just so you know. Um, you'll notice that I have, I encourage progress written on all of my pages. As a teacher, I tell my students that the most important thing they need to focus on is making progress. Baby steps is how we make things happen, right? And although IEP actually stands for Individualized Education Plan, for my students, we really focus on their progress. As we get started creating your own binder, I want you to also remember that progress is important for you. This isn't about making things look perfect, it's not making them look a certain way. This is just a guide to help you. And remember that this is a new system. So it's gonna take some time before you feel fully confident in how it's working. Remember, just focus on the progress. And as you do more of these and you get better at filing your paperwork and knowing where it is, focus on that. All right, the first tab that we have is IEP members. In here, you're going to want to keep a list of all your teachers, case managers, and related service providers who service your child's IEP. I also like to know how best to contact them. I personally write in the school year, so at the beginning of the year, what school they're going to, and the year, the name of the person I'm talking to, what role they play on that IEP team, and how to contact them. Um, some teachers go do best if you phone, give them a call. Some are best at email. And several of my teachers use the Remind app. So I would put in where's the best place to contact them. Second tab that I have 
is the contact log. You may or may not be aware of this, but every time you contact your child's case manager about something IEP related, you make a note of that conversation. As a parent, I highly recommend that you also keep track of who you talk to, on what date, what was discussed, and what was decided. As a teacher, I often just print the emails and file them and then make a note on the contact log. This is just an easy way to have everything, not to have everything in your head about what's going on, who was doing what, what are the next steps. Um, feel free to copy this page as many times as you need to. Um, I also recommend using it not just with your special education team, but anytime you talk to a gen ed teacher as well. Then that way when you talk to your um, SPED team and you have things, you have it listed out exactly what was going on and who you spoke with. The third section is a place for you to keep a hard copy of the procedural safeguards. These are your rights that you have as a parent with a child with a disability. I have another class that goes over these procedural safeguards. Um, if you feel like you need to dive into them and understand it better, I personally recommend having a hard copy in case, just in case you need a hard copy on hand, just in case you need to refer back to it. Um, I teach in Utah, so I know that our procedural safeguards were just updated in September of 2021. Um, so feel free to make sure you know what's going on, what the laws are, how they've been updated. If you don't have a hard copy or you don't remember if you've seen one before, you can always ask your school teacher, your case manager. They can get you a copy of them. Hey, the next section is the initial and reevaluation section. Um, initial testing is what goes on to get your child um, qualified for special education. And then every three years we do a reevaluation. So if you want more information about these, there is another training that I do that's going to go into depth about them, um, what they do, what we look at, how the process is. Um, this section is where we start really using those pockets. So here's how I do mine. Um, in the pockets, the most current paperwork is kept right here in the pocket. Then at the end, when I'm getting a new evaluation done, I staple it, I hole punch it, and this goes in my binder right behind the tab. So most current goes in the pocket, and then all the other ones are um, right behind it. This way I don't have to dig through, like, here's all my paperwork, which one was the last one. I just know that in the pocket is the most current. Anything behind the tab are the past ones. In the next section, it's the IEP section, we do the same procedure. Current IEP goes in the pocket, all the other ones get stapled, hole punched, and put behind the tab. Each quarter, your IEP case manager and all service and all service providers are required to inform you of the progress your student is making toward their goals. Here in the progress reports, I personally put all of my quarterly progress in the pocket. At the end of the school year, I staple them together, hole punch them, file them behind the tab. And that way I've got a running record of what's going on and each school year is stapled together. Um, I know that IEPs don't run school year to school year, but sometimes it's nice to just be able to pull out from school year to school year. Um, if you want, you can also do IEP to IEP and then that way it's all together, however that works best for you. The next tab is for our transition plan. This tab doesn't come into effect until your student is 14 years and older. So currently it's not included in my student's binder. He's only in first grade. The transition plan is where we start to look at the specific skills that your child will need as they transition out of school and into independent life. Um, Transition plans, again, we start when they are 14. They have a separate transition transition plan that is written up and discussed at the IEP meeting. Um, there are goals and there are different things that we take a look at. Um, and again, every year or so, current goes in the pocket, everything else goes stapled, hole punched behind the tab. Um, if you want more information on transition plans, I will have another training coming up about transition plans and there you'll get all of the documents that I use with my students personally as we get ready for transitions. Uh, following the transition tab is one called transitional services and outside agencies. Again, this is not a tab that you'll be using until your child is 14 years or older and there's just more information as you start working through your transition plan. This way you can contact the people that you need to and get the support and help you need as they get ready to transition. The next tab is other educational records. This is a section for anything other school related. I personally like to keep their final report card for every year, um, anything that comes home from the school that's super important. Um, sometimes I put in awards or things that they do. And this way it becomes also a little bit of a record for my, my kiddo when they um, 
move out and get ready to take over their information. Here's like everything good um, that comes from the school. All of your report cards, like everything. So it's just kind of a fun, fun way to keep track of all the other information that you need to. Next tab is medical information and outside services. This is where you're going to put all the reports for anything that happens with your child medically. Um, every time that we do a well child checkup, the reports that I get from the doctor get hole punched and put in this tab. Um, for my oldest son, he goes to um, vision therapy for ocular motor skills, and those reports get punched and put in this tab. Again, current ones in the pocket, other things, um, or things that I need to access quickly go in the pocket, everything else just gets hole punched. Um, my youngest daughter sees a therapist, and those reports go here in this section. So just anything that you do outside with medical, um, so then you have quick access to it as well. Um, I also recommend if your child is on medications, keeping a list of medications, the dates that they were prescribed, dates that you stopped taking them, um, how to use them, all that information would go in that section. The second to last tab says behavior plans, and this is the one that you may or may not use. If your child struggles with appropriate behaviors at school, they may be placed on the behavior plan. This is a separate set of paperwork. It's usually tracked through a tracking system, and this is updated um, as necessary. Sometimes um, with some of my kiddos at school, we do every quarter, it's updated. Otherwise, it's done annually. Um, again, in the tab, it goes to the current. Um, I like, this is where I like the two pocket. My daughter, her behavior plan goes in that front pocket, and then her trackers go in the back. And this way, when we go in to have a meeting and see how things are going, I have all of her trackers that she's brought home that are signed by the teacher with all the data on it so we can take a look at it. So then I've got it all in one place and it's not like, oh no, where did that go? And information all over. The last section of the binder is for notes. Um, there are other classes that I will be teaching and putting up here and I would love to have you join me for those as well. I do do notes and I have guided notes so that this is a good section for you to put all of those notes in. Um, or to put your own personal thoughts. I like to take a spiral notebook with me, and this goes in the back of my kiddos um, data binder as well. So this is where I just put all of my meeting notes. When I go to meetings, I have my binder. I take notes of what's going on, um, things that I need to do, things that I need to talk to people about, um, all that information. Then this just becomes another one of those contact logs, running information. Um, it's also where I can write down questions I have that come up, um, either before the IEP meeting, during it, um, anytime. So then when I sit down at my meetings or go over notes, I have all of my personal thoughts recorded there. And that's it, my friends. Now you have your own personal parent data binder. It's just a nice quick tool to help you access all those papers that you need quickly. I hope that it helps you feel more organized. I hope that it helps you be more prepared to be an active member in your kids' IEP meetings. Resource, have a good day.